Good morning, everyone. Happy Monday. Page number 588 will be our opening song. Page 588. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, our shelter from the stormy blast and our eternal home. Under the shadow of your home, your saints have dwelt secure. Sufficient is your arm alone, and our defense is sure. Before the hills in order stood, or earth received its frame, from everlasting you are God to endless years to say. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. This fifth week of the season of Lent, uh, it's a climax of preparing us for the entry into Jerusalem on the Palm Sunday. As we hear the stories, as we hear the predictions, let us open our hearts and minds to the grace that God wants to pour in our, into the, those places to renew, to rescue, and to bring healing. Let us call to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life that we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried aloud, O eternal God, you know what is hidden and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know that they testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of these things that which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she was being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I'll have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, Are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination and without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. Then all the people returned in haste. To Daniel the elders said, Come, sit with us and inform us, since God has given you the privilege of old age. 
But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they were separated, one from the other, he called one of them and said, How have you grown evil with age? Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty, although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you were a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a mastic tree, he answered. Daniel replied, Your fine lie has cost you your head, for the angel of God shall receive the sentence from him you split you and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other one to be brought. Daniel said to him, Offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel, and in their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, tell me under what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, your fine lie has cost you also your head, for the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they had plotted to impose on their neighbor, they put them to death. Thus the innocent blood spared that day. The word of the Lord. Our response is, even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. <coughs> Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked man, says the Lord, but rather in his conversion, that he may live. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, but early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area and all the people started coming to him and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, made her stand in the middle. They said to him, teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? 
They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down, began to ride on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down, rode on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with elders. So he was left alone with the women before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said to her, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin any more. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus Christ. Beautiful readings given to us today, especially the, the first reading as well, you know, from the book of Daniel. We chose the shorter uh, version of this because I think we all know the story of Susanna. And they, it comes from the last chapter of the book of Daniel. And the book of Daniel, those two chapters are not part of the Jewish canon. And also they do not appear in the non-Catholic Bibles, only in the Catholic Bible. And these two sh- stories of the last chapter of Daniel is the story of Susanna and story of Daniel in the lion's den and what pre- preceded that, that he was fighting with the priests uh, of the Baal and, 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 uh, and also he was fighting a dragon. But all these two, uh, two stories of, uh, of uh, uh, lion's den and Susanna are the beautiful stories of, of, um, of the mercy of God, that God wants to rescue us. And I think that, that's what it is, the, those two stories, because I don't think that it's a story of the gospel and the story of, the, uh, of Daniel is all about adultery. If you look at the Bible, there are so many stories of adultery, but that's not the story about it. It's a story of our human heart. Story of, our, of us, human, human beings, who are prone to weaknesses, sins. But it's not about sin, because you cannot write a sinless book about a sinful man. You can't. Yeah? It has to be included in this. And the Bible is full of those stories. And yet we all know it's not about that. The story of Peter denying Jesus is not about denial, it's about the mercy of God, the beauty of God, that God welcomes us back, that God can forgive the the sins, no matter how big the sin is, we have the access to God. And uh, and Daniel is is, is just a prefigure, allegory of who Jesus is. Focus on the long dramatic story in the first reading gospel is not a, about the adultery, but it's about the, the wisdom. It, it is about the being the champion for justice, for mercy, for the truth. Isn't that what Jesus stands for? And I think that's what it is that as we come closer to this dramatic of holy tritium that we see in a front mural, that we come to who is this God that we try to follow? Who is this God that we try to imitate? Who is this God that, that we want to exemplify in our own lives? Can we be champions of, of good and forgiveness? Can we be the champions of, of restoration, not accusation? Could we be the champions of truth, not the lie? Could we be the champions of, of mercy, could we? After all, I think that's what we want to do, imitate Jesus Christ in our everyday life. So the real story of these two readings is the story of God, 
who is ultimate champion of justice, wisdom, mercy, compassion. Daniel and Jesus rescuing uh, the people are also the image of God who wants to come to rescue us. And, uh, and I, I, I was thinking as well, the sister gave, gave us this little book, and here is a, a, a beautiful summary of, of this. If I want to paint a picture of being rescued that takes place in our souls during the prayer of absolution and confessional, this gospel would illustrate it. Going to confession, hard as it may seem at times, is truly life-giving. In confession, we reveal our sins and offer contrition. Then Jesus offers mercy through the priest, absolves us of our sins, and gives us grace to go and avoid sin in the future. That's what the true, truly story is all about. God coming to our rescue and inviting us to imitate him that we can provide a rescue for someone else. May this be our, uh, for these final weeks, uh, final days of season of Lent, our own prayer that we will be the ones who can bring rescue with good word, with the support, with the words of love, with the words of compassion, with the deeds of kindness and mercy, whatever God sends us to be. We all can do it, don't we? Can we? Will we? That's the ultimate thing for us. So let's pray for this. Let us with one voice bring our needs before our loving God. For our church, may God continue to purify, sanctify, and making us ever more holy in his sight. We pray to the Lord. For judges, lawyers, and all who work for justice, may they be guided by the spirit of truth and love. We pray to the Lord. For those who are falsely accused, May God defend and strengthen them, we pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here, may we be freed and strengthened by our encounter with Christ in the Mass. We pray to the Lord. For your prayers. Let us be listen to these stories that inspire us. Let us pray that we can be vessels of God's hope and mercy to someone in our life during this, these final days of Lent. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the Mass intentions for all of our people who are on the parish prayer list and those who have asked us to pray for and those whom we promise our prayers. We pray to the Lord. And for all who have died, may they soon enjoy the eternal peace of Christ in heaven. We pray to the Lord. God of love and mercy, hear our prayers today, and we ask them through Jesus your Son and our Savior, who lives and reigns forever and ever.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer to you. Fruit of the earth, work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer to you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that preparing to celebrate the holy mysteries, we may bring before you as the fruit of bodily penance a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God. For through the saving passion of your Son, the whole world has received a heart to confess the infinite, the infinite power of your majesty. Since by the wondrous powers of the cross, your judgment on the world is now revealed and the authority of Christ crucified. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fond of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread, therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Alan, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O Lord, so that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our faults, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Mass is ending, ending grow in peace. Say, Michael, the Archangel, Have a blessed day, everybody. Page number 588, we'll sing the verses 4, 5, 6. 588. A thousand ages in your sight are like an evening gone. Sure does the watch the and the night before the rising sun. Time like an ever-roaring stream soon bears us all away. We fly for God of help in ages past. We continue to pray for all of those who are on our parish list in our parish bulletin, for those who have asked us to pray for them as sick, and those who are preparing for the sacraments of initiation in our parish family. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Most holy and immaculate Virgin, our Mother Mary, you are our perpetual help, our refuge, and our hope. Mother of perpetual help, confident of your powerful influence with God, obtain for us these graces.
Let us pray to be open to God's word. Let us kneel to pray as a community of faith. Mary, all generations have called you blessed, and the Almighty has done great things for you. Let us pray for our temporal wants. Let us stand now to present our petitions and our thanks. Lord Jesus Christ, at a word from Mary, your mother, you change water into wine at Cana of Galilee. Listen now to the people of God gathered here to honor our mother of perpetual help. Grant our petitions and accept our sincere thanks. Grant wisdom and guidance to our Holy Father, Pope Francis our Bishop Allen, all priests, all leaders of our nation, state, and community. Grant peace and unity throughout the world, especially in our homes and families. Grant that young people respond generously to the call of the Holy Spirit in deepening their faith and choosing their vocation in life. Grant us continued health of mind and body. Help the sick, especially those on our parish list, to regain their health according to your holy will. Grant eternal rest to all our deceased, especially those on our memorial wall, and to the souls of all the faithful departed. Let us pause now to silently present our own petitions to our Mother of Perpetual Help. Lord, accept our thanks for the new life of grace you gave us. Accept our thanks for the graces received through the sacramental life of the Church. Accept our thanks for the spiritual and material blessings we have received. Let us pass now to silently thank our Mother of Perpetual Help for our own favors received. Please kneel as we pray for the sick. Lord, may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you that he may defend you 
within you that he may sustain you, before you that he may lead you, behind you that he may protect you, above you that he may bless you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us renew our confidence in Mary as a perpetual help. Let us stand now and unite with Christians of all ages in praising Mary and in committing ourselves to her powerful protection. Hail Mary. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, who gave us your mother Mary, whose image we venerate as a mother ready at every moment to help us, grant we beg you that we who call on her help may always enjoy the fruit of your redemption. Thus we ask through you who live and reign forever and ever. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing, who reigns now with Christ, our Redeemer and King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. the blessed your glory proclaim on earth we your children invoke your fair name Ave, Ave, Ave Maria Ave, Ave In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, everyone.